It's been a while since I've done a video. Um, I guess, in a way, I've just run out of ideas or haven't had much to uh, <laughs> complain about in the world today, but uh, even though there is plenty to complain about. Um, I uh, guess the uh, interesting thing that the, the, the phenomenon that got me into a lot of the previous threads that I've been involved in or previous discussions um, is something that's quite obscure but rather interesting and some people call it the the defining characteristic of our age, the age that we live in. Some people call this the age of ressentiment. That's uh, the Kierkegaardian or Nietzschean version thereof where ressentiment is um, the act of approaching the world life itself, reality itself, um, as the oppressed, as the person who's being picked on, as the person who's being um, demeaned by stronger, healthier, richer, more beautiful, more powerful, uh, more vigorous people. Ressentiment, it's the, the idea of yourself as a victim, uh, an unjust victim. And uh, I guess in certain cases or in certain definitions, at bottom, ressentiment is a belief that those who actually are getting something out of this life are not just um, persecutors, they're actually bad. They're morally bad. It's quite a complex phenomenon, but it's interesting. And as I say, I believe that it suffuses our entire Western, especially English-speaking type of thinking. The United States began, one could say, in a fit of ressentiment, where the colonists built a mythology of themselves as these little people um, oppressed by this gigantic, rich, and powerful British Empire. And these good, moral people fought against the immoral British Empire and became, um, you know, this wonderful free state of free people, free, weak people, who were capable of banding together to defend the collective uh, notion of freedom for anybody. You didn't have to be rich and powerful to be free, uh, or to succeed by that stretch. You didn't have to have connections, just hard work and determination. And, any, and the consequent result of that is anybody who has moral fiber can succeed. Um, now, of course, that set the tone for all further American history because everybody ends up sort of now saying okay I want to be in the position of the oppressed because that gives me the leeway to sort of define the morality of our society um, a lot of people say that the left wing is nothing but a massive uh, amount of ressentiment but I personally think that everybody is capable of that sort of thing I mentioned in a comment that I left a couple of days ago on a guy's video that Archie Bunker was the king of ressentiment. He was the one that believed he was the little guy, and the liberals, the left, uh, the permissive society of the 1960s were all, these things were conspiring to get him, to ruin him. This big mass of newness and strength and um, this new sort of thing called the modern world, which was difficult for him to come to terms with, was, in his mind, an oppressor, <laughs> even though he was being framed by it as the oppressor, the argument becomes who is the oppressor and who is the victim. Sort of, you know, anyone who studied the Israeli-Palestinian quarrel uh, will see the importance of being the victim, because it allows you to uh, take certain liberties and get away with certain things that if you're the oppressor, you're not allowed to do. So it, everyone really is careful to make sure they're cast in the role of the victim. But victimhood is a tricky thing, and as I say, it's, it's not confined to the left at all. It's just that the right wing has gotten pretty clever at adopting the language of ressentiment when talking about the various conspiracies of the left uh, that are out to get them. Uh, they've simply taken left-wing ressentiment and used it against itself. Um, and I would almost say that, say, if you speak to the Tea Party types or the libertarian types or whatever, if anything, that kind of right-wing ressentiment is more dominant in Western society, it's, it's quite dominant here in Canada as well, than the left-wing kind. The sort of libertarian um, view that 
The individual is paramount, and anyone that interferes with anything the individual ever does is an oppressor. Um, that's so deeply embedded in, I would say, the American and the Canadian psyche that we don't even notice it. And I guess that's why we say that this is the time of ressentiment. Um, I live in a city where there's a pretty, <clears throat> shall we say, active <laughs> street life. And not the best kind of street life, or not the type of street life that a civilization might want to have. In other words, there's a lot of street people in the city I live in. A lot of poverty, a lot of obvious poverty, and a lot of it is racially identifiable poverty. Which breeds an interesting sort of ressentiment. You would think that the people who were, say, in, in Canada, um, the um, native Canadians who were pretty much as, shall I say, fucked as it's possible for a human being to get in terms of their historical experience, um, don't feel a great deal of a ressentiment. One of the first things you notice when you get to know these people is just how little anger they feel about their plight, if you want to call it a plight. Um, to them, the world just is the way it is, and that's it. You know, This is a gross generalization, but I think that there's a, a lot of truth to that. The ressentiment that I see that attaches to that sort of thing is, for example, the affluent urban professional, not always a white person, by the way, who goes out for his lunch break to smoke a cigarette or have a coffee in the street during his work day, he might work in a law office, he might be a lawyer himself, he might um, be a fairly affluent businessman, who when he's sitting there having his beer or his lunch or his cigarette or his coffee or whatever in his lunch break, sees a lot of street people, and he resents those people. By their mere existence, those people are ruining his world. Even though he's stinking rich, he's powerful, he's probably, you know, there's a good chance he's connected, notice I'm saying he, he's connected, um, and he does quite well out of the world. But he resents the presence of these unwashed people, these unsophisticated, uneducated, trashy, dare I say it, people. They're making his world ugly. He, in his own mind, has earned the right to live in a nice, pleasant world. And he truly resents these people for doing this to his world by simply being downtrodden um, or being on the low end of things. Um, you know, the, the swarms from the slums just by existing sort of oppress this guy in his own mind. Um, that's very common and it's very Archie Bunkerish. Um, and it's ressentiment. Um, it's a fascinating thing. How many people in this world, in the present uh, age, believe themselves to be a victim? Um, I, I think a lot of people would, would run a mile and scream their heads off if they thought that everyone else believed that they were a victim. Or if they thought that everyone else knew that they believed they were a victim. Nobody wants to say, I am a victim. But everybody wants to be... In terms of social dynamics, especially in politics, they want to cast themselves in the role of the victim, of the oppressed. Um, it's something that I say, uh, that, that as I say, I think pervades everything. Um, it seems to be the dominant political ethos in, in terms of Western civilization. Uh, it's been a while since I've done any videos, and I had to make a video on a weird, oddball, obscure thing like ressentiment. Personally, I don't think that it's weird or oddball at all, or obscure, let alone. I truly think it is the dominant, uh, defining aspect of our civilization and our mindset. 